next question. Historical criticism, angels, horror movies, religion versus relationship, uh, God killing people, or why does John? Why does Jesus need to be baptized? Which one do you want to take up next? Uh, probably the horror movie one. I watch a lot of horror movies myself. You do? So, yes. Oh, well, this will be a good one for you. Robert asks, Hello, Pastor Wolfmuller. My name is Robert. I'm 15 years old. I'm a big fan of horror movies, most of which involve demons and exorcisms. I have very recently become a confessional Lutheran, being drawn to sound theology and the freeing gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most of my life, I've been told by people that Christians shouldn't watch scary movies. Is watching a horror movie sinful? Thank you, Robert. Well, Robert, I'm glad you asked the question. I'm glad, by the way, he's 15 years old. God be praised that you're thinking about these things uh, and that you, you have a confessional identity as a Lutheran, I'll tell you guys what, there's a lot of young people who are discovering the, the joy and clarity of Lutheran doctrine. It's just, it's really fantastic. So God be praised for that. Now, Robert, I'm going to give you some things to think about with this. I do not think you can just say, yes, it's a sin to watch horror movies. I don't think you can, I'd love to give an answer that's simple, uh, but I, I don't think you can. But I do think that it can be a sin, and we have to remember, first of all, this is the first thing, point one, that we can sin in our thoughts. We, we normally think that if I think it, it's not a sin till I say it or till I do it. But our thoughts and even our desires can be sinful. Now, how do we know that? We know that probably from the commandments that say, you shall not covet. Now, co- even if you don't act on it, if you want something that's not yours, if you have the desire for something that's not yours, that already is a sin. So God's law is covering not only our actions, our words and our deeds, the things that we do on the outside, but also the things that are happening on the inside. Now, this is especially especially true with the sixth commandment. We have to be very extremely, extremely careful about our thought life when it has to do with marriage and intimacy and this sort of thing. And especially in our entertainment, because everything is saturated with sexuality, and and we can sin even in our imagination. So Jesus says, if you lust after a woman, in your heart you've committed adultery, so that our thought life can also condemn us. But this is also true of the fifth commandment, you shall not murder, and of the third commandment, which has to do with satanic arts and this sort of thing, that we can even sin in our thoughts. Now, this, this makes us... Especially, and this is point two, we want to be especially careful about what entertains us because our entertainment shapes our conscience. Now, there's four things, at least four things, but four things that I know of, that shape or mold our conscience. And our conscience, remember, is there telling us what's right and wrong, what's right and wrong that we do, what's right and wrong that other people do around us, and this sort of thing. And the four things that shape our conscience are our culture, our peers, and God's law and man's law, understanding that natural law is included in there as well. So our culture and our peers, God's law and man's law. So who you're hanging around with, who your friends are, is actually shaping your conscience, what you think is right and wrong, what's okay for you to say and what's not, and so forth and so on. And so we have to be very careful about who our friends are. Paul uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, bad friends ruin good habits. But also our culture, and this has to do with our entertainment, the things that we give our attention to, this also shapes our conscience. So if we're watching stuff that has a lot of violence and a lot of darkness and a lot of, a lot of despair and so forth, that's going to be shaping our conscience as well. It's going to be shaping what we think is normal and what's not normal. So we need to be good stewards of our imagination. It's part of our Christian life to be good stewards of our thought life and the things that we imagine. So if we're watching things that are are filled with filth, or if we're watching things that are filled with horror, that are filled with gore, that are filled with the dark, the satanic, and the demonic, then we got to be really careful. And we want to remember also that while these things are presenting themselves as imaginary for our entertainment, that they're also real, that there is really a true such thing as demon possession. In fact, we talk about the trouble of the demons in three, I suppose, in three levels, that all of us are troubled by the demons, and then there's demon, um, what, there's demon oppression and demon possession, and we want to be very, very careful, look out for those things. Those, those things often do not look like they're 
told that they look that we're told that they look like in the movies. It's kind of head spinning around backwards and all this kind of nonsense. But but demon possession is a true thing, and being troubled by the demons is also a true thing. So we want to be careful as we're as we're watching those things or as we're being entertained by those things that it's not shaping our conscience and making us filling us with despair or hopelessness or darkness, taking away our faith in Christ and this sort of thing. So I suppose, uh, Robert, my answer is I don't think it can be a sin, but it is something that we need to be very, very careful about. Uh, we got to ask this question, and I think this is a good thing to ask after I watch a movie that's troubling me. How, does, how did that affect my conscience? Is that making me more sensitive to the Scriptures, or is it making me less sensitive to the scriptures and and so forth. So I think that's the way that we want to think about that. What do you think, Ian? (laughs) 